WVTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, www.wvtcradio.com, or download our WVTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. are tuned to WVTCRadioDetroit.com to the Sandy Rose Show with your host Sandy Rose where you'll hear the finest in gospel music, insightful conversation, and guests that will enhance you. The Sandy Rose Show can be heard every Monday and Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, live on YouTube. So get your pencil, paper, and shouting shoes and get ready for today's broadcast. Why not text a friend or tag a friend and tell them to listen to? When you enter life apart from God and His grace, that's isolation. When God comes to see you, that's visitation. When he unveils the mysteries of eternity, that's revelation. When you think of his marvelous goodness, that's meditation. When you expect to see him, that's anticipation. When you feel his spirit moving in your heart, that's motivation when you share in kingdom building that's participation when you tell of his goodness and his mercy that's recitation when you glorify and praise him that's celebration. And when all of these belong to your experience, you can't help but to shout. Oh, you may or may not do it the way others do it, but you'll do something. You'll open up. You will let go. You'll give vent to the Spirit You'll let the overflow flow. You may not jump up and down, but you'll shed a tear. You may not cry, but you'll pat a foot. You may not pat a foot, but you'll clap your hands. Something will happen. Something will move you. Something will touch you. And you'll feel something. So you can say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God that spoke to Mother's Earth and she dressed up in a green garment. He rode this terrestrial ball into space, baptized it with a liquid mist, laid out the green carpet on the earth, tacked it down with daffodils, snapdragons, lilies, roses, and trees. He ordered a variety of blooming flowers and transfigured it into marvelous attraction. Praise God! 
the one that deferred the council of the Holy Trinity and organized an angelic host to furnish music while the glory of his father flooded the hills of Bethlehem, stepped on a heavily made airplane and rolled down in a low ground of sorrow, leaped into the Virgin Mary and was born one day in the city of David, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Praise God who makes me walk like I'm rich and I don't have to have a dime in the bank. Praise God who allows me to sleep on a pillar of peace and a cushion of confidence. He opens doors that no man can shut and if I'm running a little late, he'll hold them open until I get there. Praise God, he's our rock, our strength, our hope. Our Lord, our Savior, our all and all. Praise God, who said to the triune, Let us make man, and the word let went into action, and God stooped down, gathered dust together, piled it up in the earth, molded it, and made it like he wanted it. And when he was satisfied with that, he had made with his own hand, he stood it up to his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. This is why we praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name. You're worthy to be praised. Joshua, the Lord strikes up an interesting conversation with Joshua. He does this now. He says to, he says to Joshua, he says, Moses, my servant is dead. What an interesting segue. What an interesting lead in into a conversation. Moses, my servant is dead. He says, but Joshua, I don't want you to cry. I don't want you to mourn. He said, but what I want you to do is get up. Look at somebody and tell them, get up. He says, get up and go over this Jordan. Now touch everybody you can reach and tell them, get over it. You get over it. Tell them it happened 10 years ago. Get over it. The man left you. He already got another family. Get over it. Your daughter already had the baby. Get over it. Your son is already in prison. Get over it. You lost your call. So what? Get over it. Look at somebody and tell them get over it. In order for you to get to what God has next on his agenda, you got some things you got to get over. Look at somebody and tell them, get over it, baby. It's holding you back. It's hindering you from what God had coming. High five your neighbor and tell them, get over it. Sit, sit, sit. Now, he says to Joshua, he says, I want you to get up and go over this Jordan. He says to Joshua, he says, every place now, uh, the sole of your foot tread, uh, he says, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, in other words, Joshua, uh, if you can walk on it, uh, you can have it. Uh, is there anybody here got some stuff uh, that God promised you? Uh, I hear the Lord say, uh, he says, if you can walk on it. You can have it. Huh? Now, I told you I'm 50 years old. Huh? I was born and raised in the country. Huh? But I grew up in the church now. Huh? When we had demonstrations. Huh? Signs and wonders. Huh? I grew up when people literally took God. Huh? And it is word. Huh? I remember when the saints, huh? they saw a car huh? that they wanted to drive. Huh? They had enough faith. Huh? to go to the car dealership uh, and just walk around it. Uh, I said, I remember uh, when the saint uh, said, I want that house 
right there. Ha! And they would just walk around. Ha! Look at your neighbor. Ha! And tell a neighbor. Ha! You better walk it out. Ha! Tell them walk it out. Ha! Walk it out. Walk it out. Ha! Because if you can walk on it, you can have it. If you believe it, ha! wave it in those hands. And help me say it's With a made up mind, I'm willing to go all the way through. Though it cost my life, I'm willing to pay the price. I've got heaven in my view If it means that I have to walk all alone Or that my friends, they may be few the made of mine There's no trial that he won't take me through And if I
All right, all right. All right. I've got heaven in my view. That is just beautiful. That is just beautiful. That was the the uh Donald Vale's Coraliers. Mm. And that was from like back, 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 back. But um, I had a, a little girl, I taught it to one of my children's choirs, had a little girl sing this. We had to call the fire department because she burnt the church down. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she burnt it down. She burnt it down. But that song is just, is just moving to your heart. Now, I saw a lot of the comments. Well, you know what? Let's start off by telling everybody good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome to, to the Sandy Rose Show. I am Sandy Rose, and you are? I am Teresa Acton. Welcome, everyone. And my name is Richard Daryl Nichols, all the way from Chino. Where? You know Chino, <laughs> California. You've been right. lost, and now you're found. Yeah, lost, and now he is found. Our our son has come home. Amen. Hey, Amen. Uh, Sandy, can I ask a request for everyone to write a note to my principal tomorrow and let them know I might be sick around 1.30 and I probably need to go home. And you should say you can feel it coming now. I, I feel it. Yeah, you can feel it coming on right now. I don't want to say I'm gonna be sick because I might get sick. I just no. do, I don't want to feel. I just don't feel good. Yeah, um, I'm not feeling you. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that song, that song is wonderful. And yes, Larry Kim, uh, Apostle Kim Davis, she used to burn it up too. <laughs> and uh, that song will get you. Now, Teresa, you made a comment like this is like the second or third. Um, one that you heard was this since I think that one might that one had to be in the seventies. Well, let me let me ask you this first: Who was the soloist for that one we just heard? Cynthia Felder. Okay, it was, is there one by Myrna Summers? I doesn't know. For some reason, I was thinking that that would be the second version. Okay. The first version I've heard was a um, as I mentioned there, uh, the House of God here in Lexington did a recording called the. Uh, gathering uh and they are um the mapsons uh this roy's family are uh -huh. the mm, they are the the who's who and musicians in lexington so uh their church made you know, make made up of their family uh did a recording because they're all musicians you know and that was one of the songs on there but it was a different version so uh when i heard uh that second version i thought wait, wait a minute that's not right but it could be right we might have just, we might have just uh, 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 done a different version uh, of our own, but um, uh, I, I've always thought it was a, a nice song, and I've been trying to find it because I know I've got it on a recording somewhere, but I haven't uh, come across it yet. Okay, well, we'll, we'll have to do some it. investigating yeah. um, because I don't know whose song it is. I know a lot of uh, the Donovale songs did come. Well, you know, a lot of them came from Margaret Duro. I don't, that's, oh. I don't think that's that's one of her songs, but um, it's a great song. Whoever wrote it, thank you, thank you. And yeah, she yeah. she didn't over sing it. She just she kept it right there, and you felt everything that was in there. So uh, kudos to her, kudos to her. Um, and Richard. Uh, Paulette has a remedy for you. <laughs> you said you just need a mental health break. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, just call it a mental health break and move on. And Paulette, I did see your comments and everyone, I thank you for uh, t welcoming me back. And I want to try to, uh, you know, respond to everybody, but I'm not multitasking person. So <laughs> what you say, say? I'm not Teresa. <laughs> I got several things I'm to do Teresa. here. <laughs> and I'm going to try to concentrate on those before I start writing. But hello, everyone. <laughs> all right. All right. And we want to actually um, go to, uh, let's go to the weather. Who Roosevelt has 59 in Chicago. And you know what? It's not 59 here, so I don't even want to say. <laughs> well, we're going to skip fall and go into winter. That's why, that's why I, I whipped out my sweatshirt today 
And this is uh, my Darius Brooks and the Tommy's Reunion sweatshirt because that was the nicest, thickest, fluffiest thing that I could find to put on. And it feels good. So you guys go and get your shirt and order right. the old shirts until the WVTC ones are ready. I'm, I'm waiting on it. Okay. I, I, might, I better check on it. Yeah, yeah. Go back and check on it. Go back. Um, and uh, Mama Florence, we are we are praising God with you. I saw um, pictures of the car. She says that uh, God is great. What a mighty God we serve. Saturday night, her grandson was T-boned on his way home. And praise God, he's alive, but the car was totaled. And we're praying for his healing. And just to look at that car, uh, it was it was pretty jacked up. So, Mama Florence, we shouting a victory with you. And we hope that it won't be long before he is made whole in every way. Amen. Amen. Um, and at 79, they're in Orlando. See, that's what I like, that kind of thing. Uh, and come on, Dr. Catherine. She got <laughs> she has 76 mostly sunny in right. Los Angeles. I love it, love it, love it. Now Teresa's got 67 in Lexington. 67. Wow. It was I'm in the early 40s. At, I'm looking at like 50 something. This morning and yesterday morning, we were in the uh upper 40s in the morning. So it's it's uh it's getting cold now. Well, we're not there now. Like I said, I think it might be about 54 or something like that. Uh, we've got 87. Where? Ooh, Chino. Chino. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So that is our weather report from all over. Everybody has put in their weather report, and we are so grateful for it. Uh, and, and, you know, and not to complain about the weather. Um, because we're grateful that we can feel the weather and that we have the ability to get out and get in the weather. So, you know, don't don't take our frowny faces, meaning we are not grateful. Amen. Amen. Grateful, Amen. grateful, grateful. So um, how was everybody's weekend? Oh, it was fantastic. And, you know, we do have a praise report from Nikki Rich. She was Nikki on the Rich. program about two weeks ago. That's right. She received uh, her kidney after six years. She finally got her kidney. She had a uh, transplant on Friday. Nikki is probably listening right now. Just talk we to her. We pray for her. Amen. She's in the hospital at, uh, in, in California out here, and she's... Uh, hi, Nikki. And, and you know what I told you. Don't try to get up and do anything right now. Take your time. Enjoy your kidney. We're still praying for you. And I know God has you in his care. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. We are so happy for her. Um, and she was talking about the struggle and what she was having because the show wasn't supposed to be about the kidneys, but it That's ended right. up going right. that way. And we talked about it and talked about it. And Look at God. God yeah. is faithful. Look at God. Amen. 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 That is amen. Wonderful. That yes, is wonderful. And we do have a slight, well, we won't say it's a sad note because we know the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Um, they are. They are. You know, I had a friend, um, Ms. Delia Williams was supposed to be on the show next week. Yes. Uh, the 17th. Yes. And we had two sellout show of the play, God's Trying to Tell You Something, last Saturday. And then, uh, she went home to be with the Lord at 3.15 Sunday morning. And so we haven't heard anything about her arrangements. But we know God was trying to tell her something to come on up to glory. And we are just uh, praising God for that moment that we did have with her in yeah. the play was fantastic and i'm not saying that because i was there and because of Mr. delight it was i sold over 100 tickets to the play and they gave me an award that was the first time i got an award for selling tickets but it was a <laughs> great show good for you All yes right. that is yeah. that's fabulous that is fabulous and we are so sorry to hear i mean when i got that news i i just was stunned 
because yes. she was on the schedule to be on next week. And yes, uh, as they say, no indication, but yes, um, God doesn't make any mistakes and we yield to, um, to his will and to his way. And, uh, we, we will accept what God allows. Yes. And then last week, what, well, Thursday, we got the news that Mother Vernon Price uh, went to glory. Yeah. Um, her birthday is around, De what well, is December 1st, and her son, Louis, usually have a program in California. Yes. Uh, and she, he always bring Vernon and Loretta out to be on that program. And so they were there last year. We had a great time with that. And if you don't mind, I would like to read a tribute. Well, just a little something about Vernon. Uh, she was a soloist for the Church of God in Christ. And she was my soloist, should I say. I remember her as a little boy watching her. And you know, the, the fan that I am, I was great. It was great meeting her in person. But while Vernon Oliver Price was a native of Chicago, her musical talents and contributions to the gospel genre were celebrated far beyond the city's borders. Her heart rendering melodies and commitment to spreading the gospel message resonated with people across the globe, leaving an indelible imprint on the gospel music community. Born to Mardell and Morris Oliver on December 1st, 1929 in Chicago, Vernon Oliver Price went on to make a name for herself as a prominent gospel vocalist in the Church of God in Christ, thanks to her contributions to music and education. After completing her education in Chicago's DeSalvo High School in 1948, Price received additional training from Anna Braugh Cochran Ford, who she later co-led the Church of God in Christ International Music Department. Price's musical journey spanned over eight decades, during which she served as the choir director of the St. Paul Church of God in Christ for more than 65 years and as the judicial soloist of the Church of God in Christ First Judicial uh, of Illinois. Beyond her church performance, Christ also performed in hospitals, nursing homes, and even on Jubilee Showcase. Now, um, she was 93 years old. Wow. But she bowled on Tuesday. She was a bowler also. She was still bowling. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we always saw her, Mama Lou, um, and, and Loretta. Loretta. Uh, those were the Golden Girls. Uh, yes. We <laughs> called them his Golden Girls. And uh, it was just such a blessing to hear her sing, to watch her minister. Um, and she did it with everything she had. She never left anything on the table. Right. She, she gave everything she had every time. And we are so grateful to be able to have known her, to have seen her up close and personal um, to, to every year. We would right. see them, you know, in, in our fellowship and she would sing with us, you know, every year. Um, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And, you know, I had the opportunity to meet part of her family, the whole family, and all of them can sing. <laughs> Lewis. Real. Yes, and we had Lewis on the show as well. Right. Lewis had a birthday celebration. He was surprised, but he had uh, some of his nieces and nephews came from Chicago. And we were at a concert at that birthday party because all of them got up and sang. They they didn't sing, they sang. They sang. <laughs> they sang. So shout out to Brother Lewis and yes. Faith Price and Loretta yes. and your brothers and, and the rest of the family. Yes, and we want to shout out to Mama Lou. Um, yes. That was her that was her good duty. Uh, yes. And we, you know, we know how it is to have a friend to, to move on to a new address before you do and they left you here and um, there is a void and vacancy and uh, we did 
did call to check on uh, Mama Lou to see how she was doing. And we are yet praying for her in that Amen. Amen. Now, um, thank you so much, Donna Weber, uh, for giving us that information. That actually, that was the original version because Donna Bells wrote the song with the made up mind. Copyright was granted in 1978. So thank you so much, Donna Weber. You are awesome. And um, I don't know if you guys uh, are hearing the background music that we've been playing. Uh, we played it on the show. We played it today uh, while he was reading that tribute. And put in the comments if you like the background music. But what we're going to do before we bring on our guest for today, because he is here, we're going to play a tribute uh, and let you guys hear Mother uh, Vernon Oliver Price, who is gone on to meet the Lord. And we'll be right back after this. Be the Lord to guide me every day, every day. Yes, I walk along this narrow way. Oh, yeah. No affliction. Crazy. 
All right, that was none other than the late great uh, Mother Vernon Oliver Price. May she uh, rest sweetly um, in peace. And the arrangements uh, are as follows. She's got October the 13th um, at... October the 13th at one from one to four will be the viewing at A.R. Leak Funeral Home on Cottage Grove in Chicago, Illinois. And then on uh, October 13th, uh, 7 p.m., there will be a musical at the Greater Tabernacle Church of God in Christ on King Drive in Chicago, Illinois. And on the following day will be the homegoing celebration. At 9 a.m. will be the viewing. 10 a.m. is the celebration at the Abounding Life Church of God in Christ in Posen, Illinois. And uh, we will be giving those arrangements again for those who would like to go there because she is definitely a legend um, in the gospel music industry. A legend, legend, legend. Um, and so we do have a guest. They like that song, though. <laughs> they did. They really like the song. Amen. Yep, she just had natural talent. And uh, Mama Florence said that uh, she reminds her of Sister Rosemarie Remsen um, on the album she used to sing with Bishop Patterson in Memphis. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, we are just sending love and support that way. But we do have a guest today. We certainly do. And we want to welcome Marcus White to the Sandy Rose Show. Marcus is a professional cartoonist, illustrator, graphic designer, music artist, comedian, and actor. Born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, a graduate from Columbia College, Chicago, with a degree in fine arts. He specializes in cartoons, comics, logo designs, illustrations, and much more. Marcus is well known for his ability to draw beautiful, curvaceous women, which are predominantly present in many of his cartoon comic works. Marcus's first venture into publishing was with the 1999 graphic novel titled, entitled The Room. Although met with moderate success, the book has become a cult favorite among local comic enthusiasts. Since then, he has worked on several art projects, including poster art, artwork for published models, album covers for music artists, commissions and logos for businesses and corporations, lists of commissions for artists, entertainers, athletes, include and if i forgive me for if i uh mispronounce the name maya j amara la Yanagra, latoya uh, figuero and uh boxer rock blackwell among others marcus is currently working on a new graphic novel as well as new posters comic strips and illustrations so once again, welcome to the Sandy Rose Show, Mr. Marcus White. And you know, usually we will play a song and y'all said y'all did like the background music. I love the background music <laughs> and we want to give a shout out to the creator of that background music, which is none other than our very own Donald Weber Sr. <laughs> 
All right. And Marcus, uh, are you ready to come forth? There he is. All right. Hello. Hi. Uh, can you hear me okay? Uh, we can hear you, but your mouth is not moving. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how you doing? Can you hear me okay? This is all yep, kind of like new. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's we... not new, but for me it is. I'm very old school when it comes to these things, so excuse me. <laughs> you see, all I got right. these big headphones on, so I know it looks like I'm about to start jamming or something, but that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, and, and yeah. you know, there will be a jam period so that you can go ahead and jam. So there will be a jam period. Um, and we want to welcome you to the show today. Uh, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, I hope we don't have any, like I'm trying to get a little bit of a lag here, but I know you can right. hear, I can hear you, but hopefully we'll be okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, and you might want to, if you're not on your phone, you may want to get on the phone or get a little closer to your router and your motor. But um, we are here today, and uh, we want to welcome okay, you to the show. Well, I'm right next to my modem, so. Okay. I think right. it caught up. It, it might thank have you. caught up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so how how are you doing? Let's see here, um, not exactly sure what to do under these circumstances. Oh no, I'm you're doing, doing very blessed, very well. All right, good, good. And um, so we want to welcome you to the show today. You are an artist, an illustrator, a cartoonist. Um, how did you how did you know you could draw? I've been drawing, been doing artwork since basically since I was about four years old. So we call it, you know, divine intervention, God given gift, I suppose. So <laughs> I've been doing it most of my life. Oh, wow. Wow. So, I mean, you know, how did you discover it? Did you, you know, I know back in the day when we were growing up, there uh, on the back of the matchbooks or the comic books, there would be, can you draw this deer? You know, and if you drew the deer, they, you know, do something. So, I mean, who discovered, yeah. how did you discover that you, you could do it well enough to uh, get some uh -huh. money? Well, it's, if I can just beg one basic um, story, this is how it basically probably all started. And I can kind of not, you know, in a bad way, but it probably kind of like in a good way, probably just the way it was supposed to go. I can blame my oldest sister, Barbara, for this one. I remember around the time when I was about four, and at the time, my brother, Eddie, he could um, draw pretty well. And uh, I remember he was showing some of his artwork and everything. You know, how you're one of the younger siblings. I'm the youngest of four. And you see what's going on. You kind of get that idea in your head. And you just say, like, well, I can do that. And so my sister Barbara said, well, then do it. You know, and I guess you can say the rest is history. <laughs> really? So your brother yeah. draws, too? Um, I don't know if he still um, does some things, but he was, you know, he had a pretty good knack at it, you know, uh, initially. I'm pretty sure if he had to draw some right now, he could, but, you know, it's, he probably went to a different type of profession. I really embraced it, you know, the difference. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, now, what is, do you do just uh, portraits or do you do, like, murals or what type of, uh art do you do you're an illustrator so you obviously do things in books or whatever but do you do murals and um a primary illustrator cartoonist um and a comic book artist uh murals is probably the one thing i don't do um i haven't been commissioned to even try to do one but i know with murals it's a lot of work and it's a lot of effort it's a lot of time it's not something that i necessarily dwell into you know at this moment you know delve i'm sorry excuse the language <laughs> delve into at this point in time in my career but that's probably the one thing i haven't done but other than that i've done paintings i've done uh drawings illustrations um some computer graphics a um, little bit of i've pretty much done a little bit of everything Okay, and and now, did you do this throughout your school career? Um, how did you get discovered? Uh, I can probably credit that to a couple of things. Of course, back in the day, we didn't have like a lot of internet and those things. Uh, it was more word of mouth. 
I would say social media probably kind of helped me along as far as getting a little bit more exposure over the past like 10, 15 years. And I think, you know, so my small, my fan base still a little small, but as you know, it has continued to pick up gradually, you know, over these past years, you know, so it's basically how it all started. You know, we're like kind of like what we're doing now through the web. You know. So now do you, how do you pick your subjects? Um, well, with art, probably with me and a lot of other artists, with me especially, it's um, a lot of uh, variables with that, mostly um, emotion, how you feel about something, something like anything at any moment can inspire you and captivate you to draw something, illustrate something. Uh, I do have like favorite subjects, uh, some of the things that I'm into that I follow, like um, movies, music, um, some, you know, other um, pieces of artwork, um, what have you. So. Really, you know, inspiration usually comes from a lot of things, but mostly it's kind of like within a moment thing. Like you could be out and you'll see something, whether it's a person, object, an animal, what have you, and it'll inspire. It can inspire you to draw it at that moment or it can inspire you to come up with ideas based on what you've seen or experienced also. Life experiences also can um, inspire a lot of my artwork as well. But I'm basically influenced by a lot of things. Hey, Marcus. Okay, go ahead, Teresa. Marcus, um, touching on that, um, now, when you have um, things that inspire you, mm -hmm. but uh, let me ask you this, has anyone actually um, uh, inspired you, well, not inspired you, to actually commission you to do, actually do them? Now, the, the pictures that we saw are people who, did, who are deceased. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anybody living uh, that has asked you to uh, make a, a cartoon or a character out of them? I've been, uh, I like before I have been commissioned uh, by a few people. Uh, one person that you may be familiar with is, um, and I, I don't know if you'll see lost contact with them, but it was somebody that I did do a little bit of work for was professional boxer Rock Blackwell. Uh, remember, I, he contacted me and asked me to do a series of comics and um, illustrations for him, and I did those. Uh, other than that, I've had a few um, small to mid range uh, rap artists and music artists that have asked me to do commissions like Maya J. Um, it's uh, one, I believe she calls, yeah, her name's uh, Miss Dreedree. She had me do something recently. That was about the last rap artist I've done something for. I've had a few other ones. Nobody can immediately come to mind right now. So please pardon me for that. But uh, uh, mostly anybody, you know, most of my stuff, like, like I said, I, I when I become inspired to do something, I know some of the people that I have illustrated are, you know, deceased, God rest the soul, but then some people aren't. And But as far as just straight commissions, I do get a few things here and there, but I haven't received anything incredibly major at this moment. But, you know, those basically are some of the people that I have uh, done uh, commissions for, but I have received commissions in general. Well, Larry uh, Whitfield just asked you to do a cartoon for the Sandy Rose Show and the crew. So you've been asked to be commissioned. <laughs> No problem. Okay, there's, there's one there. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, talking about, you know, what you see and when you do your art, I am a photographer and sometimes I can awesome. see, I can see uh, a shot, you know, when people uh, are talking in there, I said, that's a great shot. And I say, don't move, but mm -hmm. usually they move. Yeah. But, you, know, you, you see that moment. Uh -huh. What do you see before you create art? Man, again, it depends. A lot of things. Um, it's very similar to what you're talking about. I may see something. And I've come into the habit, too, of bringing my sketchbook with me in the car. Because <laughs> before I would see things when I'm driving around, when I'm out traveling about, and then I'll see something. I'm like, man, why did I bring my sketchbook? Because just like you said, if it's something <laughs> moving, they're gone. Because so I have to rely right. on my memory for the most part. So I try to remember to keep things with me, keep Andy. So it's again, um, it's a lot of things uh, that you know that'll bring me to come to point and be like, yeah, let me try that, or let me draw this, let me paint this, let me illustrate this. Uh, but again, it, like I may see something, and later on, it'll give me an idea or an inspiration for something else. Um, mm. Sometimes, as an artist, your ideas will piggyback on each other like that. You'll come up with something, and then it'll help you create something else. And then while you're doing that, that idea in particular will inspire something else and you know one of the things you do have to get out of control too because as a writer and an illustrator as a comic book artist that becomes a problem because sometimes you'll create an idea 
and you'll get started on that idea. And then while you're working on that idea, you'll come up with another idea or another, mm -hmm. um, you know, plan for another book. And it may end up being more interesting than the one you're working on. So you have to be kind of disciplined because what will happen is you'll lose interest in the one you're working on. And then you'll go to that one. And this pattern will kind of continue. I realize I'm not the only comic book artist who's had that problem. I always wondered if it was just me, but I've, you know, read other artists and what they've said, and it's it's actually a common thing. But usually when you have um, a high level of imagination, this is the kind of things that you deal with, you know, over and over right. again. So oh, even what, when you're out what, there being inspired, you know, it's the same thing. What mediums do you use? Oh, I'm very old school. I know a lot of the young kids now, they use the tablets and all. I'm still very old school pencils pens inks markers um <laughs> paints uh, color pencils uh, i do use the computer i do use the application photoshop and illustrator to do the finishes on some of my graphic artwork like coloring and what have you um one of the things i learned is that of course when you do things by hand it takes a long time but anything with art takes time so even if you're using photoshop yeah. to color something or to illustrate something it still takes a long time a matter of hours sometimes a matter of days so it's not a difference you what you have to look at is that you have to look at these things as just another tool another thing to help you get across your idea or to finish what you're trying to express so, so I, but how, mostly how i'm old you, school how do you feel about ai do you uh, do you think that that hinders the artist do you think that some folks who don't have the talent that you might have um, and they're out here creating and making money. And it is, do you think in any way that's taken away from you? Absolutely. Uh, it's an unfortunate thing. Uh, it's something that you see coming years ago with the advancement of technology as it comes along. And AI has more and more been very prominent in everything that we do. I've noticed it myself and also listening to a lot of other artists and also what I've experienced that a lot of these apps come out. Sometimes they can just take a photograph and they can put it into the app. Next thing you know, they can create all these, you know, series and pieces of artwork. And it does look very similar to stuff that people paint and draw and illustrate. And yeah. yes, in, in a way it can, it definitely has, probably has, you know, and it is definitely a risk of it taking away jobs from artists. So I can understand why the actors and the screenwriters guild, how they went on strike because of what's happening in their industry, because it's an art form as well. So the same thing here. And I've noticed a lot of artists are very concerned about it. What happens is, I can, you know, I can say this much. If it's an older company that specializes in graphic arts and they interview somebody, they will be more in tune to, you know, what you can do as an artist personally, maybe not so tuned to what's happening in technology. While it's maybe a newer company, they're just, you know, of course, the idea is that everybody's just trying to get their idea and their point across. Yeah. Like, you know, you can do this and do this for me. Like if I need like a poster done, if you can get it across and get it finished in such X amount of time, you know, you've done your job. But and so what happens is with these apps and with this AI, somebody who's not even talented or doesn't have the ability to do something can just do this and present this to them. And, you know, of course, they'll reap the rewards from it. And that's the very unfortunate thing. So I'm definitely not with AI. I hope they find a way to continue to regulate it. Um, to me, it's not a tool. Like to me, like I said, when you use art applications like, you know, um, Photoshop, Illustrator, when you um, use a Wacom tablet to draw, it, it, um, except in, in, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, um, when you're using a Wacom tablet instead of using, you know, paper and pen, to me, that's just another tool, another way of doing it. But in this case, this is something completely different. This is somebody who literally is not drawing, not painting, not illustrating, and they're creating things. And I've seen some of the work. I'm not to say that it looks bad or anything, but, you know, again, it, it is an issue and a concern. It is a problem within my industry. And, you know, something I definitely pay attention to and I'm definitely not with. So I absolutely support artists that, you know, use their talents and their own real abilities to create and to bring across their ideas to everybody. Right. Because you can go into an AI program and tell them, create a picture using Marcus White uh, as a model, his mm -hmm. or his, his artist as a model and draw this. And, yeah. you know, and people are doing that. And some of the artists are just like hitting the ceiling and I don't, 
blame them. Right, right. It's a problem. That's the thing that that's the one thing from a lot of artists I've uh, talked to and I've heard from. That's the one thing they have a problem with is that the irony is that these apps are literally using us yes. for the things that we've done in the past to create these, you know, these yes. images. And it's like, yeah. well, how ironic is that? You know, so yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, you know, and to me, no matter how high the technology gets, you can never replace or replicate, you know, just true art, you know, in its raw form. You just can't. Mm -hmm. You can't. There's always yeah. something less there. Something because this this art is subjective and it's emotional. Mm -hmm. um, all of that from the artist comes out, right. you know. And I want to feel feel the pictures. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And yeah. we definitely felt yours. Now we have a couple um, a couple questions from the audience, and what we're gonna do is mm -hmm. go on the break. And we'll come back and uh, give you those uh, those questions, uh, and we will be right back. I know that the group is chomping at the bits. Like, uh, is it our turn? We got questions. <laughs> I'm here, so. so. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go to a song. This one is none other than Kim Butler and the Thomas Whitfield Company, and. Uh, We'll be right back after this. This is WVTC, the internet gospel radio station, right here in Detroit. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the highest praise, highest praise that we can give on to.
right, all right, all right. We are back, and that was none other than the Whitfield Company with Pastor Dr. Kim Butler out front, and she he really got him with that song. She got him. Yeah. She got him. And we are here uh, with our guest today, who is none other than Marcus White. He is an artist, an illustrator, and a cartoonist. And we got a chance on that break to see uh, just a few samples of your artwork. Man, it is awesome. And the audience just really, really, really enjoyed uh, watching that. Now, do you sell them or do you use them for just different projects? Because I'd like to have one. Some of those are great. Definitely. Uh, I uh, sell my work and also most of my work I also use to promote me as well. So um, a lot of the artwork is not necessarily for sale, but mostly for exposure. But then also, like we talked about before, when I'm commissioned, um, I sell those. And also sometimes I make prints of um, my artwork that I've done, you know, because I get a lot of people that say they'll want a copy. And, have, you know, of course, I have to, you know, make prints and, you know, they were able to sell those to them as well. So, yeah. So, I, when you, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> and I was going to make an observation about your uh, work, artwork. Mm -hmm. I noticed you use a lot of rich black uh, colors in your, in, in the artwork. Is that on purpose? Not necessarily. Um, sometimes, uh, um, like I guess you say like what you would consider like the negative like basic colors like black white or gray sometimes my uh, position in certain ways can bring out the um the more brighter colors into a piece of artwork right. so in that you know sense of being on doing it on purpose probably yes but not necessarily I'm not limited to that but I do know sometimes when I make certain things certain compositions you know that background can bring out the um the colors a little bit more unless I'm concentrating on doing something in the background like some details then I don't have to do that so yeah Okay. Now you you are an artist, an illustrator, and a cartoonist. And you talked earlier. I, I guess I want to know what the difference is between those three. And plus, when you said um, you don't really sell your art like that, you might go and make a print. Tell us the difference in all of that. Okay. Uh... I know the lines are probably blurred between um all of those and you know pretty much in this day and age but uh an uh cartoonist an illustrator um and a graphic artist can almost be about the same thing uh there's just some differences uh cartooning can uh pretty much cover it can cover animation it can cover just cartoons in itself um it can, it can also cover comics uh illustrating can is a lot more wider it can cover those things but it can also cover ads uh posters uh, anything any other ideas somebody to come up with uh, artistically speaking uh graphics probably is more based in things such as logos trademarks um certain images that deal with those kind of things uh or maybe computer graphics like video games and then that can also cover into illustration as well <laughs> So uh, it's a little blurred, but it's, you know, it's best to explain all those things so that, you know, you're covering everything so everybody knows what you're capable of doing. But right. to me, it's like art is art. So all of it to me is almost under the same, you know, tent. But, you know, most of the stuff I do is basically covered up the, the, the everything, but to straighten it all out like that, you know, that's basically about the best you know explanation I can give for it uh, as far as I do, like I said, I do make prints of my artwork. I've also have sold original um, artwork too. Um, some of my color pencil and pencil drawings and um, paintings of uh, that nature also as well. But for the most part, some things that I do exclusively and I'm not necessarily selling to somebody or being commissioned. Like some of the, like a lot of the things that I post on my webs, I'll get comments and I'll get responses like, hey, can you make me a print of that? That's when that comes into play. Well, okay. Yeah, y'all had a question. Oh, my question was uh but first, are you in Chicago? Do you live in Chicago or are you in Los Angeles? I'm based in Chicago, yes. I live in a suburb of Chicago. Absolutely. That's, that's why that bull ago. shirt is on your chest. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> and part of the reason, yes, this is my this is my favorite basketball team, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, my, my kind of, yeah. <laughs> 
I had a question about uh, your, what was your inspiration for doing the animation of the Hollywood sign? That's why I thought maybe you might be in Hollywood. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, I love uh, a lot of historical things and I love movie history, uh, everything about it, you know, and I've always been inspired to do so. There's probably one of the reasons why I like doing the illustrations of the movie posters. Uh, that's part of the inspiration for that. And I just like the history of, you know, just the cinema and, you know, everything about it, the good, the bad, what have you, you know. And that was one of the things that inspired that because I like the history of that sign as well and what it meant initially and what it means now in comparison, which is a very interesting story to itself. Right, right. And it just inspired me to do it. And, and you know, and, but that, that was probably one of the, the more recent uh, animation on pieces I've done. And it's a very simple animated piece, but still I think that it was very expressive in what I was trying to get across, you know. Right. Animation is a whole nother thing. It you know, it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience. Yeah. So I like the way you did the years and you had the years represent something and at the end you had the tourist bus going by the sign. And hey, yeah. that's the thing in Hollywood to have the tourist bus, you know, go mm -hmm. up in uh, Griffin Park and uh, Mulholland Drive all there just to see the sign. So that was neat the way you had that bus going across the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I had to do a lot of research doing that one. And I also wanted it to chronologically express itself through the years. And I knew that was one of the subject matters I could put in to kind of give it a more modern point at that point, you know. So it was like, right. yeah, let me put a tour bus just going across the screen. Like earlier, I had the biplane going across the sky. I think it was in the 1930s. So I was trying to express all of that. So, yeah. You did well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, And yep. we do have a question from the audience and uh they want to know do you draw characters for special events live so i know mm -hmm. sometimes people might have fundraisers and they go get an artist and they tell them just go ahead and draw this mm -hmm. picture and then we'll auction it off do you do that uh, i've been to a couple of events and expos where i've had people just have me draw something in particular caricatures it's something I could do, but I'm not really, I would consider myself a caricature artist. Um, it's not, a, I love it though. I love the profession, caricature artists. I love uh, those kind of, that kind of artwork. Al Hirschfeld is uh, an artist that very much inspired a lot of the things I do. And, he, and that's what he was very well known for. And uh, I know a couple of caricature artists. I've always explained myself with that. It's like, well, I know with that uh, profession, my goodness, it's very subjective when it comes to opinion. People have to understand that a caricature will exaggerate. Yes, and it'll it's exaggerate to. features, and it's supposed yes. to. What it's I've, supposed you know, right, I've experienced, and other artists have also experienced. I've done them in the past. Like you get variable responses from that. Sometimes you get people that understand what it's about and they love what you do. Then you get the other side, <laughs> and so it's probably part of the reason why I've never really practiced it on the regular. But it's something that I could do. Um, something I may venture into later on. I haven't um, done any. I I did do some caricatures some years ago when I was in college. I did for an event that I was commissioned for um, at a nightclub in Chicago. And I wish the club was still there. I forget what the name was. Um, it might have been. I don't want to say flashback, but it was a basically it was a retro disco club. This was like back in '97, so that was during that time where you know the disco era was kind of kind of having a resurgence, you know, it seemed like every 20 years something comes back. So, you know, probably the, you know, the nineties are probably coming back now. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I was hired me and a couple of artists from my school because I was still in college at the time. We had a commission to go out there to the club and they had this promotion for this new alcohol drink that literally changed the color of people's like palate, their tongue, like maybe red, green, depending on the color of the alcohol they were drinking. And all we had to do was sit there and just draw people that they asked. And so, I did have people come to me and I was, you know, drawing illustrations and drawing those kind of caricatures. I was basically doing it kind of in my style, though. That's the thing. It's like when I exaggerate, I don't exaggerate a whole lot when it comes to facial features. But I do know that certain things have to be exaggerated or have to be expressed when you're drawing, you know, illustrations or cartoons of famous people or of people in general. Like you'll notice something like, OK, that lady's eyebrows are very prominent or that nose is a certain way. And that's very prominent. I have to make sure I express that when I'm drawing it. So, I mean, it's something that I, that I can do, but it's not something that I've never necessarily practiced, you know, caricature, but I love caricatures. I do. I really do. 
especially when they do really good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Teresa. Yeah. Um, Marcus, let me ask you this. Okay. Now, I, I was looking on your website and I did see where you have the, the Chicago Bears 100, the mm -hmm. 100th anniversary. And of course, we did see uh, a print uh, or two off of that as um, the last song was being played. Uh, but I would say that, you know, that would be probably the thing to do if you are a Chicagoan. But are you a real, real uh, Chicago Bears fan? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay. again, let, let sports me, history. Um, my, I'm sorry. My favorite sport is baseball. Um, and I know a lot about Cubs. that. But football. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Cubs are my favorite team. Um, and interestingly enough, my second favorite team was the Red Sox, if you can believe that. Uh, that goes back to. <laughs> Me following baseball is a whole other story. But um, with the Bears, yeah, that's my team. And um, I know right now we're kind of having a little bit of a tough time, but we did win our last one, which is good. But of course, and I'm going to say something I have never, ever said, but you can get on the Lions bandwagon at this point. Okay. Oh, well, and, I, and, I, and the I, Lions I, are doing great I've right never, now. ever said that in my life. We don't like the Lions. I understand really? why. Really? <laughs> uh, I'm still, I got another part of my question. Okay. I got another part of my question. Uh -huh. uh, the reason why I asked you that is because uh, I was looking, I said, like I said, on your website, and um, you have a picture of Dick Buckus, and mm -hmm. uh, he passed away on the same day as Vernon Oliver Price on yes, Thursday. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, have you, uh, are, are you a, a big uh, fan of his as well? Because he was a legendary Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. All of the iconic best players, especially him. Especially him. Uh, he definitely is in that high category. Him, Walter Payton, Gail Sayers for me. The, the guys I grew up watching, the 85 Bears, of course, all of them, but especially, you know, yeah. Mike Singletary, Richard Dan, Robo Marshall. Yeah. William Perry. Now, that's interesting you say that. He's my favorite. He's probably my favorite player of that whole team. Because um, when I grew up, you know, I was, you know, I've always been a big guy. I still am, you know, even though I've lost some weight, but still. And, uh, you know, that, that very much was a big inspiration for me to see a guy like that, you know, and they called him the fridge and he was out there doing his thing. And, you know, I, you know, I, I guess you can say I very much attached myself to that guy. So it's, it's like big he was guys my, unite. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So <laughs> he was like one of my, he was basically my favorite of that team, you know, but everybody from that team, you know, I have a friend now who's a big time football fan and, Bears fan, and he could probably tell you every player on the team, all their positions. You know, he knows more than me, and he, you know, he knows about a lot of those things. But me, also, it's also you know a sport that I love very much as well. And yeah, absolutely. Amen. Amen. Now we have a question. Uh, Roy wants to know: Do you use any uh, any other apps? Uh, do you use just Photoshop, or do you use other apps? Uh -huh. Believe it or not, for the most part, I use Photoshop. Uh, and I use an older version. Um, it it okay. was one of those applications that uh, took take some time for you to figure out how to learn just in doing something. Yeah, I never did a, take a class it's for a it. Steep learning curve there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know they have more, you know, advanced versions of it now over the years. But I use an older version. I forget the year, the one that I have it. But <laughs> believe it or not, I think it may be from like maybe two thousand four or somewhere from there. But um, it's mostly that's what I use to uh, do the colors and finishes on my artwork. Uh, I did try to use Illustrator a couple of times, and I can use that app, but I'm just more comfortable with Photoshop, probably because that's the one I've been using, I've been learning to use. But I've also have used, uh, like I said, I've used Illustrator. I've uh, dabbled into Corel Draw a couple of times over the years. Uh, but mostly, yeah, it is Photoshop, yeah. And you I might want to go to the newer <laughs> Photoshop. It's, it's a little bit easier than the old one. I know it probably is. I guess what happens is, you know, like I said again, I'm you know very old school when it comes to this. You know, I'm very hands on. Ninety five percent of my artwork is hand drawn. So once I learn an app, it's kind of like you're comfortable with something, you stick no with it. Right, yeah. you know, so that's why I haven't even bought a Wacom tablet yet. Even though I've tried them a couple of times, I say, hey, this is pretty cool. I have to admit that it's actually a cool device to draw on the screen and set on a piece of paper. But I'm still used to physical media. You know, I'm from a different generation, so yeah, I <laughs> I, that's, that's right. what I'm used to. So yeah, but I, I did notice that looking at some of the newer versions of Photoshop, I'm like, wow, that would be easier to do. And then I know also they do a lot of animation and stuff with them too, which will probably help some of the things yes. I do. So yeah. Because my animation, I just use not Sony more, Studio it's for that, you know. Instructions <laughs> there too, as yeah, well. Yeah, so. exactly. And yeah. I was just learning Photoshop on the fly. I didn't even read any books or anything. 
So I was just figuring things out as I went along. That was another thing, too. Once you got so meticulous with it and you're learning, and then when you get to a certain point, you get comfortable. It's like if somebody bring out that new version, you're like, okay, is this something I should really get into? I don't know. <laughs> it's like, wait, wait, you're taking me too fast. Wait. Right, right. And it feels that way to you, but then it's like maybe other people be like, no, nah, this shouldn't be a problem. You're like, no, you got to understand this is where I'm coming from. This, this might be a too big a next step, you know, to learn the new version. Photoshop, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Roy wants to know about um logos and trademarks. You talked mm -hmm. a bit earlier about yeah. um logos and trademarks, yeah. I do those as well. I've actually been commissioned to do quite a few of those. I've done um a couple for uh, a couple of people that had like their small businesses, like hair or uh insurance companies. I know my sister, I know it's family, but still, it was a job. My sister, she had an insurance company one time. And I had to do a logo for that. Um, and that's something that I actually get quite a bit of uh, work for um, when it happens. You know, it's something I probably have more of a wider resume for than anything else as far as commissions. People usually come to the first thing they'll ask, like, hey, do you do a logo? Do you do designs like that? I'm like, yeah, I can do it. And that's a process. That's a big process, too. What I usually like to do is do maybe five to ten different, you know, types of logos. Unless sometimes you'll get somebody to know exactly what they want. And you just yeah, do exactly what they ask. I yeah. How do you do that? Because people mm -hmm. will, you will take your time and it takes mm -hmm. time to do mm -hmm. each and every one. Mm -hmm. And you can show them 10 and they say, nope, that ain't it. And that happens have, sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, most, you most spend of the time. two days on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it, it's something to expect with that. Uh, but like I said, um, sometimes you get somebody, they know exactly what they want right away. You just do exactly what they want. And usually seven to nine times out of 10, you get it right. You may have to do a tweak here or there, but it's exactly because they'll be very specific. Then you'll get somebody, they'll have an idea, they'll have the name of their company, but they're not quite sure what they want. They give you a few things. So what I'll do is, I, like I said, I'll do five to 10 different ones just from what I can come up with. And one or two things that happen, either they may pick one of those they be like oh wow i really like this one i don't know exactly what they want they're like oh i know what i want now looking at what you've given me or sometimes you'll get one that'll be like i like what you did in this one but i like the words in this one can you take the image and the words out of these two and put these together and make well you're yes. like absolutely yes. so what it is is that you give the um the customer certain ideas when they create a logo you'll give them these you know a lot of options so that way, if they're not specific, then they'll figure out exactly what they want. And then, like I said, like you said, sometimes you'll get one, you'll do five or six of them. No, that's not what I'm looking for. And that, and you know what? And that usually happens a lot with a customer that may not be specifically familiar with what exactly they want. You know, the ones that do, you don't have to go through that process. But the ones that don't know, you'll have a process like that, and it might take a little longer. But it is a lot of, you know, it is work. It is work and effort. But you try to, you know. Um, <laughs> You know, do your commissions accordingly with that. You know, like, well, this is going to be this, and this is going to be this much, and this, you know, because I have to do this and that. But right, it, it, you know, it can vary too. You keep yeah. using up my days, so it's <laughs> you're gonna have to pay for this. Um, yeah. and Roy, he said, uh, he he loves the the radio back there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's one of my little favorite things. I believe Crosley made this one. Um, it's a it's just a retrofitted type radio. It has an old school cathedral radio look to it, but it has yes. like the Wi-Fi plug, a CD player on it, and it does have a radio on it, of course. So it has like these other options. But I love the look of it, and I, again, I yes. like a lot of old school stuff, and I like sometimes listening to old radio shows I have on CD and stuff on it and everything. And, you know, kind of gives it that feel, you know. So yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Teresa. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I want to ask you this. Uh, first of all, I want to say this. Um, I was on the other side of that when you were talking about uh, you were you would make things for people and then they say no, that's not right. Well, I was on that. I was on that side okay. because uh, uh, for Sandy's birthday we had a, a character a caricature made and uh by randy gray from L louisville and i don't i can, can't tell you how many times i call him back now can you change this this little thing here can you change that so i know that's probably it is frustrating for you all uh when somebody does do that um uh, but well, with uh, a caricature i understand it like i said before because you have to um really you know exaggerate things everybody's right. you know response to their feelings towards it is the same you know so i get that with um with other things i can also understand that too because 
I tell people, I'm nobody's a bigger critic of my work than myself. I'm harder on myself than anybody can ever be. That's why when I get criticism, it's not a big deal. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't even post it until it gets past me. You know? And um, so I can understand when somebody says, like, hey, can you tweak that nose? Something like that. Because a lot of times I'm doing that very same thing. When I'm looking at, you know, when I'm working on, you know, likenesses of people, and I'm like, yeah, that doesn't quite look like me. I need to work on it a little bit more. I need to change that. You know, I do that a lot. So I understand also that part too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it takes a lot of patience as an artist, but, but it's yeah. under, but a good artist, you know, they understand, you know, like, yeah, because like I said, we're so critical of our own work that, you know, absolutely. Like, yeah, you see something that I'm, <laughs> I'm going to listen and I'm going to look and see, you know, yeah. I know in school when you we were in art and we would mess up a picture or it didn't turn out right, the teacher would say, oh, that's just, you don't have to throw that away. Just do something here. Have you ever done uh, messed up a picture and you corrected and made it to a fine art? Do you own all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's all the time. Uh, rarely do I get it right the first time as far as I'm concerned, you know. And I finish it, but I'll have a plan, especially when I get to come to the movie posters that I do. I'll do four or five thumbnails, try to get an idea how I want to do it. Then I'll work on it. And then when I'm finished, I'll see the first draft. And I'm like, nah, that character needs to be a little bit more to the left. That one needs to be a little bit more to the right. That logo needs to be down a little bit more. That needs to be up. And matter of fact, I should have drew that person a little bit better. So I'm going to take <laughs> no, that out. Dude, you have start to start all over. Right? Yeah, start over. Draw that person over. This is, this is what you do. Because at the end of the day, when you present it to everybody, you want it to be completely representative of you and what you do and what you've created and what you wanted to create. You want exactly. it to get as close as humanly possible. So if it's like at 20, 30 percent, that's not good enough. And that's <laughs> idiotic. You're like, no, no, I got the, as far as you're concerned. Now, understand I've done stuff before and I've had friends and family look at it. I tell them what they think. And they'll be like, don't mess with it. It's perfect. It's good the way it is. And I'm telling them like, yeah, I appreciate your you. feedback, but that left eye is a little eight and not symmetrical as it should be. <laughs> so let me come back. I got to fix that. It's messing with me too much, you know. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, I get a lot. That happens a lot, but that's pretty much You're all OCD, the time. Aren't you? Yeah. You're OCD, aren't you? Yeah. You're OCD, aren't you? What's that? <laughs> I said you're OCD, aren't you? Kind of <laughs> I don't know. I don't believe so. <laughs> you, I mean, you, just, just right. you just want yeah. it right. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what it comes down to. But if you ask any artist, and really in any art profession, even when it comes to music, especially that too, and, and like you said, photography, it's the same way, especially when you're developing your photos, because I've done that before too. And especially when you do it manually, I know they... That's a completely different thing now. We have a lot of people doing digital stuff, but the old school way of method of doing photography, I'm sure you're familiar with, it's like you're developing it and you do the first snapshot, you develop it and you look and you're like, yeah, that blur right there to the left isn't quite right. Let me go back in and sharpen that up and do that. And you have to keep doing this until you get it right. <laughs> so as far as you're concerned, because like I said, once you put it out there, it's out there. And so that's hard to, you know, to bring it back. And then even when you do that, sometimes as an artist, you could have something on display somewhere and then you'll look and you're still sitting there critiquing yourself you know even though it's on there and it's on the wall in this place you're still sitting there like hey you know, yep. i should have did that a little bit better right but, right but and, i've and learned that I've come point, to the you point. got yeah. to you got to cut it off at some right point. right i've come to the point that if i get it about 90 percent of what i what yeah. i wanted then then i'm good you know so if, like like i'll feel it's at 100 when i first present it but then if i look at it later and i'm like because you always feel as like an artist you're growing so you'll see something you did five years ago that you're like, you know, I could have done that better. Yeah, you know, see, I, I, I can't go back now. and look so, at yeah. my work because it, it's hard to do. It's, 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 a, it's a bit of a cringe factor. It is because I've seen things even anatomically speaking that I've done yeah. maybe not even maybe showed us maybe six years ago. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I should have drawn those arms a little smaller. I should have drawn that dude's arms a little bigger. You know, their body's yeah. a little off balance. You know, <laughs> you'll see these things, you know, and. Maybe when you did it, you didn't see these things. You thought you did this great job. Yeah. yeah. And then you look at it. And, you're and like, it was. Yeah, and yeah. it's a snapshot in time. And you mm -hmm. have to take it as that. That's, right, what, right. that's the way it was back in 76. And mm -hmm. that's what I did. And now we in, you know, this year and we just moving on. And so right. you have to 
pay with it. Um, we're going to stay right here in Chicago and take our last break right here in Chicago. Chicago, we're going to go over to the Cosmopolitan Warriors and Pastor Durrell, and we'll be right back after this. This is the <laughs> That was none other than the Copy Carlton Warriors with Pastor Darrell Smith. And he said, thank you. And my Bible says that it's a good thing to give thanks. And my grandma said, thank you makes room for more. So it's uh, we just like to be thankful here. We are um, here uh, with our special guest today, none other than Marcus White, who is from Chicago as well. So we kind of kept it right there, uh, <laughs> up and down 94 today, up and down 94 today. And uh, we he is an artist, an illustrator, and a cartoonist. 
and we are so happy to have him. We have a couple questions still from the audience that we have to cover. So this one is from Hallie, and Hallie wants to know, have you ever created an album cover from it for any artist? Uh, yes, I have. Again, um, I've done uh, album covers. Mostly, actually, they were mostly for singles. Uh, I guess how they distribute them now, I guess online yes. or what have you. Um, uh, printed media, uh, I would say not not yet, unless they printed them. But uh, I have had commissions for artists that have had me do um, some of their singles. Uh, so, yeah. So in that case, yeah, they said, like, can you do an album cover for my single? Like, absolutely. So I have done that. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. And uh, Reynard wants to know, uh, have you collaborated with your brother on any of any artwork? Uh, needless to say, no. Um, <laughs> but we, uh, 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 you know, that I mean, we could have, Ed want to, you know, my brother Eddie probably listening, you know, hey, hey, Ed, you know, but hey, <laughs> Ed. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we would want to, but uh, we probably collaborate on other things, you know, he just like me has, you know, a sense of humor. We probably, you know, some of those things, you know, we watch a movie together, something like that, or. We'll talk about, you know, sports, uh, music, even our words sometimes, but just as far as, you know, like you draw this and I illustrate that. I don't think we've ever done that, but that might be interesting to do one day, you know, now that I think about it. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Hey, Marcus, do you want to talk about your YouTube channel and tell us uh, what's uh, on your YouTube? I, it's very interesting. I, I enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Um, my goodness, it's a lot on there. Mostly I try to keep it with my artwork. Uh, mostly it's just stuff on there about my art video clips, uh, promoting and expressing my artwork. I have had some of my little bit of um, acting on there. I had some comedy skits, probably why I'm laughing a little bit to myself, but <laughs> I haven't done one in some years now. It's been a few years, uh, but I need everybody to, oh, you need to do a new one, you need to do a new one. But that was me basically just getting out there, just seeing like if my brand of humor could be funny to somebody else because sometimes when you think it's funny, it'll be funny to other people. And as it turned out, I got a lot of good responses on those some okay. little comedy skits I did. And I said, yeah, I got to do some more one day. So, yeah. So is it just Marcus White? Is that the, is that the channel name? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I believe it's under, uh, Marcus artist 75. That's how they can find me on YouTube, but they can literally type up my name, Marcus white or Marcus white cartoonist illustrated should also pop up that way as well. But my YouTube name, YouTube name is Marcus artist seven five, as well as my Instagram and my Twitter. They're also the same, and my TikTok. They're all the same. Yeah. Yep, it sure is. It yeah. sure is. Marcus, <laughs> artist 75. So if you're looking yeah. for him, that's what you want to go with. Uh, Cynthia uh, ask, is asking, um, do you charge a startup fee? Uh, in regards to... Um... I would think if, let's say, if I said, uh, or Teresa said, listen, uh, we want you to uh, do a... a a picture and they commission you for a picture. Do yeah. you, do you, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I see you nine. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure what we were talking about. Absolutely. Uh, my experience has taught me to do that. So, if, you know, these past few years, I definitely do that. I always ask for half up front of whatever the commission um, we decided, you know, the price is going to be. I always ask for at least half of the commission up front. So, so, yeah. so do do all are all of your pictures the same or the same or are they different different prices? Oh, the different prices depends on what they want. Okay. Because you'll get somebody that wants something more physical, that may want something just more graphic. I just want something for my internet or something, so I have to make a series of um you know uh, high quality, high resolution images for them to download or what have you. That'll cost a certain amount. Then you may have somebody who may want that, and they may want some physical artwork that they can have framed and put in their home. That could, you know, also change the price. So it's varied. You know, it does vary. Certain things I may have a base price for, but then other things, um, you no, know, for the most part, it just it basically depends on the job, what I'm asked to do. All right. Um, I got one more before we let the panel loose because they are ready for you. Okay. Um, uh, Donald wants to know, out of all the people you've drawn, who had the perfect face? The perfect face. My goodness. Um, now, this depends on what he means. Now, if he's saying perfect as in no flaws or <laughs> perfect as in maybe, maybe their personality. 
Maybe like well, you made me know. What's the flow? best one that you that you enjoy doing? You know, oh, and you wow. after you saw the face, it was like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. This is man, good. that that has that goes kind of across the board. I know recent. I know some years ago, I did a drawing of. Um, I did a couple of drawings. I think we posted it here. I did a drawing of Duke Ellington in color pencil, and I also did one of uh, Louis Armstrong at the time. And I thought that you know just expression wise and looking at those the way i did them i say yeah 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 the duke ellington i thought that i did a you know a pretty decent job that was like yeah it's like duke has always had like a lot of personality and expression in his face and you can see that and so you see somebody like, they like yeah you know gotta draw that i, I can understand it because like sometimes you'll see somebody you're like oh i have to draw that person or i have to draw this person i have to draw her i have to draw him um I've no, I don't know if this completely relates to it, but I've had a lot of faces that I've drawn that some of them are very easy because they'll have enough features or personality in their face to the point that getting around boundaries and borders, even when you block it in, you know, that's a technique when you block in a face when you're illustrating and drawing it, it's very simple. And then you have some sometimes when their face is very flawless or it's very perfect like this, too smooth, what have you. It's hard to get around borders and boundaries, hard to create them. So sometimes it might take you somebody like that a little longer in adjacent Hmm. to somebody, you know, who might have a very, you know, very clean feature. So sometimes that could be a problem. So yeah, that depends, you know, it does, that that, the answer that it probably does depend, but those two people, those are two people that did come to mind at the time when I, um, when I did illustrate them. Yeah, they had a lot of personality and a lot of things. I said, yeah, you know, this is really cool to draw, you know, but that happens quite a bit. I know I did a pencil drawing with Martin Luther King a few years ago, and it was very much like that. But it was the first time I ever drawn. And I need to say I was a little nervous and I videotaped myself. It was one of the few times I videotaped myself doing the whole thing. I actually have that on my YouTube channel if anybody is, um, wants to look at it. And I sped it up a little bit because, you know, if I did the whole video in the real time, it would have been over an hour. <laughs> but, um, I did talk about it before and, you know, you can kind of see what I'm doing, just some meticulous things you got to go through to get the face in. But again, he's somebody that you really want to get right. So when people see it, they know right away, like, well, it's Dr. King. Yeah, because you can do some pictures and if it's not recognizable. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And that, that, yeah, that, usually that, that, that happens with me. Like, like I won't even post it unless it's close enough. And then sometimes, I'll think like I followed everything, every pattern that I thought I was looking at in the person's face. Why does it not look like them? <laughs> and what happens is you need fresh eyes as an artist. You'll sometimes you've been looking at it too long. So you'll take a break about an hour or so, maybe even look at it the next day. And then you can see it for what it really is for real. And you're like, oh, I got it right. It's okay. And then sometimes you can see right away, like, oh, now I know what I did wrong. So it, it's a lot of that too. So yeah. <laughs> Teresa, did you? I was yeah. going to ask you to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to ask you to talk about. Do you have an upcoming show in Chicago? I don't have an upcoming show in Chicago. Um, I do have a convention in Romeoville, Illinois, um, a comic book convention uh, called the Romeo Con. Um, I have to forgive me. I'm not sure of the exact date as of yet, and I have to get back to the promoter about it, but it is coming up in early November. And I will mm-hmm. post information about that um, on my web subcomic. So if anybody's interested, I'll definitely have it for them soon. But that's the, um, the only one I have currently uh, upcoming at the moment that I have. Um, what will you be doing at that show? Uh, basically uh, promoting myself and selling some of my original prints and original art, you know, art prints you know, that I have. That I do have um, printed out. I may print some new ones for it. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that one out too. But it's a smaller convention. Like and you see the photograph right there. That's when I was at the Fan Expo Chicago and I'm um, in August this past August. And that was four days, and that was a whole lot of fun. But um, it's gonna be similar to that. Uh, and it's, this one's only two days, but it's still really cool. I like the smaller conventions because they tend to um, really you know, focus more on the artists and on the industry more than the bigger ones. The bigger ones, not that it's a bad thing, has a lot more of the Hollywood element into it. And a lot of artists and creators have realized that now. And so that takes away a time from a lot of exposure and a lot of people and a lot of public coming to get to know you and seeing what you do. So and I guess you could say the social media has become something of an importance now. It's like people don't socialize like they used to. So 
So, you but, know, what, what I want to know is what is the difference? Because I'm looking at your work and it's outstanding. I mean, you know, you. we can see the people you did not. I, we thank you for putting the name up there, but <laughs> we didn't need it because we we knew who you were portraying, you know, in that. Thank you. I definitely what, appreciate that. What sets you? I mean, at, at what point do you become like a Marcus Glenn or, you know, a, a, another artist that that is doing like big big shows and that sort of thing. Cause I mean, I would love to hang your art in my house. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, it's it to, well, you know, I tell people the art business is a very competitive and highly political field. Anybody that's getting into it, especially the young people, they have to understand this. You have to put a lot of, um, of your heart into it. You have to really love doing what you're doing because it doesn't necessarily happen overnight. Uh, I'm still grinding as much, even considering the amount of exposure that I've received over the years. But sometimes it can happen immediately. Sometimes yeah. it takes some years. It's yeah. an art form. It depends. It yeah. takes, you know, one moment in time, one person, one moment. One person, one that that right could, person. Yeah, and it could take you the rest of the way. That can help you get that name out there and you become so, I'm coming, I guess you could say instead of Marcus White, I become Marcus White, you know. Yeah. Maybe in, I, maybe in my mind right now, I've always been Marcus White. But right. Oh, I see that you. How can I, I get everybody to Marcus also White in your house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do yeah. you have a Marcus White? Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. Um, and I think Donald, just before you get to that, Teresa, I think Donald said it correctly. He said there's so much integrity in Marcus's work. And it is. Thank it you. Is. Thank it you. Is. I appreciate that. Go ahead, Teresa. Go ahead. Yeah, I have one question. And we were talking about I A A I earlier. <laughs> and um is there anything that you can do with your artwork that could distinguish you from AI, some type of move or something? Because some of this AI stuff really looks more plastic to me. It looks oh, yeah. like it's made up as opposed to being real. Mm -hmm. So is there something that you can do in your, in your artwork to distinguish yourself? Basically keep doing what I'm doing. Um, like I said before earlier, um, it can never replicate, just like you said, replicate or replace, you know, the feel and the look of just an original art piece drawn originally from somebody's hand. It's um, in particular, like, you know, a great artist I can quote, you know, I can mention him, uh, Kadir Nelson. He does great, uh, great paintings, you know, amazing paintings, amazing artwork. And it has a look. It has a certain distinguishable look about it. You can't replicate that. You know, the same thing even with the artists from back in the day, some of, of the past, you know, go to the museum, you see a Leonardo da Vinci, you know it's him. You know that if it's a Monet, you know if it's, you know, a Patrick Nagel or a Picasso, you just know. And that's something, even if somebody is inspired by that artist, you can't replicate it. It can't be replicated. And especially, in, and it doesn't, and this also is included with AI, with these apps, you know, they, no matter how good they get it, They'll have you believe that, but just like you said, it has this plastic feel to it. It doesn't have that same expression or the feel that, you know, original artwork by hand has. So the idea is for me to keep grinding, keep doing what I'm doing, and not all the other artists feel the exact same way. It'll still come out in the end. You know, people will see like, but you know, there's something special. There's something different about what he or she has done, you know, or what they have done, you know, that's separating it from this. Yes. And that's what I want to have, you know, on my wall or that representing it, my art firm or my business firm or what have you. You know, it it'll just have a different feel. I remember listening to um, the Jacksons talk about it one time. They were talking about the difference between music now and the way they were doing it with the real instruments and everything. It said it doesn't have that same pop, the same emotional that feel that yeah. you can get live as you're listening to the music in adjacent, not that it can't sound good now, you know, modern music. Not that it can't the way sound they do good. It. Right, because some of it does, I have to admit that, yeah. but, but there it, is something about that organic feel. There's something right. about that, that, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, the computer just can't replicate. It just yes. can't. Yeah. Yes, there is, a, there is a difference. Um, Absolutely. And the computer can't replicate it because it is right. what? A computer is, it's, right. it is what it is. Right. So, um, real hard emotion, do, you, do you enter contests? 
Oh my goodness. I haven't entered a contest in quite some time. That's something I did a lot when I was younger, um, in high school, a little bit in college. I did enter a contest some a few years ago. I did. I remember uh what was her name? Delicious. She had a single coming out and she wanted artists to draw their own interpretation of for her cover, like an album cover for a single. And she picked somebody else. She didn't pick mine, but you know, it's cool. But <laughs> Um, I think that was the last thing that I ever did that was close to that, remotely to a contest. Uh, but um, again, it's a very, like I said, it's a very competitive field. It's also a very political field. And I learned mm. that early yeah. in the game in high school. When I was in competitions, you know, I can say this all modesty aside, I felt like I probably should have, you know, necessarily won or should have came out better in and and then also you got to consider the fact it's not just that it's taste you know artists you know the it's taste subjective. has something to do with it too. Yeah, yeah exactly so it doesn't mean i didn't do a good job it's just that the judges might have found something about this far more appealing than what i did yeah and so i understand that more now as a grown man than i did younger that part of it but everything plays a part in it and i think that's one of the things where i kind of i don't necessarily would say shy away from contests but i haven't seen a competition or a contest yet of late that I've, you know, been able to see and like, you know, I can enter into that. Maybe something can come with that. You know, something can come of that, you know. But, you know, but, I've, but it's been a while since I've been in like a big major competition it has. <laughs> that has been some years. Yeah, well, thank you for not giving up. <laughs> oh, no. That's, <laughs> that's very important too. As an artist, you cannot give up. That's very important. Don't do it. So many things in this world in reality will play that part and will try to give you the idea or the impression that don't do this anymore or it's too hard or the competition is too stiff. Nobody's paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm not getting the exposure I want. Do not give up. This is why I said your heart is very important in this. If you love what you do, it'll take you further than anything else. And you'll be able to deal with all these things that come along in life, all the aspects of it. Marcus, are you listed on a lot of those websites for independent artists? Because when I was looking for the one I was, what I had found, I found his name on this list. It's like a, almost like a, like a calling list. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's a list of artists. Yeah, the one site that I know I'm on is uh, they call it so Divine Art. Um, DeviantArt.com, and um, on there I'm listed as Marcus the Artist, but you know, same guy. <laughs> so not like the other ones, but uh, it's a lot of artists on that page. It's basically all about art, you know, paintings, drawings, sculptures, whatever anybody do, photography, even uh, animation, and it's it's a big network. Uh, that's one of the pages I have been on for some years now, and it's it's a really good page. Uh, I thought about um, engaging other uh websites that pertain to that um, i just haven't found one yet that i'm you know very favorable to i'm like yeah you know i'll you know put my work on that one as well you know but yeah that's yeah. one that i am on right now absolutely it's like an angie's list for art yeah, like yeah, yeah exactly yeah it's kind of it has that you know feel to it yeah absolutely so yeah yeah well mm -hmm. i mean you have just opened up our eyes about art about drawing about being an artist even about AI in art, uh, you made us think about some things uh, and uh, it's very appreciative. So what we're going to do now is go and do our round robin and we'll let you have the closing remarks. But we've got Teresa and we've got Richard who is, has not been here on a Monday in a while. So okay. we just happy. We just we just happy to look at him. Oh, thank you. Gaze upon his face. <laughs> All right. We'll let him go first. About that. Okay, well, yeah. come All on. All right, Gaze. then. <laughs> I can go first. Well, you know, I want to thank the Lord again for this day, allow me this opportunity to be here. Thank you, uh, Sandy Rose, for giving me this opportunity to sit here with you, Teresa, and Brother Marcus. I just want to say life is like a picture by Marcus White is excellent Thank and you. i enjoy it thank you <laughs> um i want to say that you know it's a picture i got heaven in my view and you know i need the lord every day to guide me along this way so i'm going to pray pray and pray as i graze 
in this heavenly, uh, on my way to this heavenly situation. And I just want to thank him because he's always making a way for me. Uh, thank you for being there. I want to thank Cynthia Busby, yes. the greatest pu publicist. Yeah, she is. Listen, if you, if you want to get somewhere, you better call her. Thank you, Cynthia, for being who you are and getting this, this great guy here. Thank you, uh, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. And so, Richard, you knew you had all that to say. You should have told me go on first. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's our closer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we thank you so much uh, for being on the show. Marcus, your your you. um, artwork is exquisite. And we thank you so much for sharing that with us and sharing your, your story. Uh, we are just thank really uh, glad that uh, you, uh, like Sandy said, didn't give up. And uh, we just pray God's blessings on all of your future undertakings. Um, I didn't get a chance to look at uh, some of your films that was on your um, website, but uh, maybe if you come back another time, we could talk about that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That, that'll probably be some fun, you know. <laughs> a lot of blush, blushful moments would probably be fun nonetheless. <laughs> it's like, yeah. What those beautiful, curvaceous women that you, uh, that you, uh, your, uh, your bio says you draw? Oh, yeah, that's, um, <laughs> that's nothing we didn't get a whole lot into, but uh, yeah, that's, it's, it has become something of a specialty of mine, and you know, oh, wow. because you know, because you know, part of the expression that we have a couple of ladies present. I do love the ladies, so you know. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And it's um, it is a part of you know one of my specialties that I think a lot of people come to expect of me. They're like, yeah, we're gonna do the next drawing of a model or something like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You know, but I want to believe that it's not the only thing I do. I do other things as well. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Now, yeah. now, do you draw from? Can you draw from a picture? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. The, most of my stuff, um, all my references is from you know pictures and some things that get come out of my mind, of course, also. But if I'm doing somebody famous or somebody like that, or somebody wants me to draw them, of course, you know, I need reference. So yeah, absolutely, you know, and that's a lot easier than having them pose for you, you know, because then they don't have to worry about just being still. You know, we talked about that earlier. You know, you see somebody like, don't move, you know, but. We're in an era now, you know, we have that advantage that a lot of artists back hundreds of years ago didn't have, you know, didn't have that advantage. You know, they're like, no, you need to be still while I'm doing this. <laughs> I have to do that, but yeah. All right. Well, uh, Teresa, were you down? Yes, I was. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. <laughs> uh, we want to let everybody know that Marcus Social Media um, is Marcus Artist 75, and you can catch him all over the internet with that. As, and and in, up to and including his YouTube page. So, Marcus, we're going to uh, let you have final thoughts. Oh, thank you. Um, first off, I uh, want to thank you again for having me on your show. This was great. I uh, also wanted to congratulate you on your Stellar Award. Thank All you. Right. That's a big deal. That's a it's big a thing. huge deal. <laughs> it's a huge deal. Um, and it's know, two. Much love, many right too now. Much love, many blessings on that. Congratulations. Uh, and Thank again, you. I also want to say if anybody wants to contact me for promotions or commissions or events, as well as going to my website, they can also again contact Cynthia Busby at Busby Promotions. And um, my email again is uh, Busby Promotions at AOL.com. So they want to contact her as well. You know, if they want to reach out to me, they can reach out to her as well. You know, so. Again, this has been really cool. This is my first time doing a podcast. I have to admit okay. that. Hope I hope I did all right. Again, like I said, I had the the old school headphones on. Didn't get there, but I don't know what they do modernize, you know. And I was thinking, like, man, I need some headphones. So we don't have an echo. What do I do? You know, so I to go and get the old headphones. Or look like I've been listening to my boombox all day. <laughs> and maybe I will, you know. Maybe I put on some earth, wind, and fire or something after this. <laughs> You know, you guys got me in the gospel spirit now. Maybe I'll listen to some of my Clark sisters or, you know, somebody Come like on. that. Come <laughs> on, and stay on 94. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know, you know, do so. Detroit, Chicago, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, one last question. What what high school did you attend? Percy L. Julian High School in Chicago, class of 93. And all right. All my fellow Jaguars, you know, how y'all doing? Who's listening? You know, go Jaguars. <laughs> and it was our 30th anniversary this year, my graduating class, too. I couldn't make the reunion, unfortunately. I've been so busy with all the things and with my artwork, but well, everybody had too. a great time at the reunion and all. And I 
course, we'll see everybody again soon. So, yeah. 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 Busy is good. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll be back in this space tomorrow uh, with Keisha Ely, who is an awards program producer. Now, you don't want to miss this because she's going to give us the ins and the outs of how these shows go. Um, you might be thinking one thing, but she's going to show you something else. So make sure that you're on tomorrow. Marcus, we just really appreciated you and we thank, thank you appreciate and you bless as well. you. And I'm going to be calling because I need some of that artwork. I need some All of that right. artwork. <laughs> I'm here. So yeah, absolutely. In the studio <laughs> in, of WVTC Detroit. We'll put awesome. some up in the studio. So thank you, everybody, for thank tuning you. in. We love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. <laughs> night, night. Night, Mama night. Good night. Elder Rudolph, stand for you. Elder Rudolph, stand for you.
you for listening to The Sandy Rose Show with your host, Sandy Rose. If you have enjoyed this broadcast, won't you consider liking and sharing this with a friend or family member? We'd love for you to share it on your Facebook page. Thank you for tuning to WVTC Radio Detroit. Remember to like and share this broadcast with a friend. We are WVTC, winning victory through Christ. Congratulations to WVTC Gospel Radio, as they are again the recipients of the 2023 Stella Award for Best Internet Radio Station of the Year. Many thanks to our viewers. Keep watching as we are winning victories through Christ. Radio Detroit thanks the following supporters for their generous gifts of support to keep this station and these broadcasts coming your way. God bless you, we thank you, and we love you. This is WVTC Gospel Radio Detroit. You're listening to WVTC, Gospel Radio Detroit, and we're flowing in the spirit.